CCU Orlando, Natural Awakenings Magazine, and Unity of Nashville present The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly show featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 63, The Lost Art of Gratitude. And now your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome to the show. Happy Monday, friends. My name is Cynthia Alice, and I'm the host of The Authentic Spiritual Journey, and I am here in 818 Studios with my producer. Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Croft. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey. What is up? What is up? What is up? <laughs> that's you what know, you usually say. That is? Yeah, that's my, that was my... my uh, was, was that my, last year's? No, it was my drummer talk catchphrase, because oh. I, you know, I did a drummer talk podcast for 11 years, and it's like, what is up? What is up? <laughs> This is Dave Croft. Welcome to another episode of Drummer Talk, the Internet's longest running drumming podcast. Yeah, I have it all memorized. You know, um, God, that'd be, you know, it'd be fun to bring some drummers on sometime to do interviews since you're a drummer and I was, uh, my former career was, was. No, once a drummer, always a drummer. Yeah. Well, you know, I got to know um, through a string of bizarre circumstances, the drummer, uh, Kenny Arnoff. Oh, yeah. Um, Kenny's a real good friend of a friend of mine, you know, who owned a studio. And so. I got to know him. Yeah, he's the real deal, man. Oh, man, that guy. He's played with Rolling Stones, yep. Indigo Girls. Um, oh, he told me this funny story, too, on stage with Mick Jagger. I mean, the guy's... And, and he's he's built like an Olympic athlete. The guy travels with like a suitcase of vitamins. Yeah. It's ridiculous what great shape he's in. Yeah, he, he's, um, he's the real deal. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, um, we're happy to be with you for show 63. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, it's, it's uh, amazing. We're cooking along. We've got... You know, new swag and T-shirts and stuff oh, out yeah. and about. And we're, I see you're sporting your uh, your EOTS shirt. <laughs> EOTS. EOTS. I know you can't see it because it's black and white, but the sh- the shirt is like this. What, are we calling it lilac? It's the the official color name is orchid. <laughs> oh, even better. Although I love orchids. Aren't orchids white usually? They're all different. Or lavender. 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 Lil- I like li- lilac. lilac. It could be lilac. That reminds me of something my grandmother would say, lilac. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting segue into today's show. <laughs> but first, um, we want to do a shout out. Yes, we are. Yeah, we, we're talking about our three Nordic country friends <laughs> that we've been giving a shout out to, uh, Finland, Denmark, and Norway. And uh, memory escapes me. Which one of those haven't we done yet? Well, we definitely haven't done Norway. The Norway it is. Yeah, yeah, we haven't done Norway. What's up, Norway folks? Thanks for listening. Yes, uh, and um, I got to know quite a few folks from Norway um, when I lived in Seattle. There's a whole community oh, really? there. Yeah, the Scandinavians, Norwegians. Yeah. Uh, they all have jokes about each other. You know, how do you know? Um, <laughs> why do Scandinavian shoes say TGIF? Well, toes go in first, you know. <laughs> anyway. So yeah. like... The Finnish people like have jokes about Norwegians and oh yes, but to Americans it's all just oh they might as well all be one country (laughs) exactly. What do we know? (laughs) Nor Finn, let's see. I know. Nor Finnmark. What do we know? It might as well be a country, one country. Yeah, exactly. So bless you, friends. We're so happy you're joining us. We're having a great time in the studio today. We're equally caffeinated. We're happy with our new shirts. Yep, we got uh, our shirts. Coming off of last week's show, talking about movies and stuff. I could talk about movies all day long. I know. That was a lot of fun. I hope I hope um, that was fun for you as well, and you didn't go, oh, no, they're talking about movies. I hope you went, oh, cool. I wonder what movie I need yeah. to see. And I did realize I left out one of my faves, but, um, but which, we'll do that. Which in, is that? Oh, oh, no, okay. oh, oh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that movie. Yeah, you totally got to. I know it from it's the song. It's a classic, man. Classic. What about you said breakfast at ten? You know that song, that nineties. Oh yeah, pop yeah, hit? yeah. No, it's there's nothing popular though about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a, gr- a couple of great scenes in that movie, man. That's a great movie. Is that Audrey Hepburn. Yes, yep. yes. Audrey. She sings and plays guitar in it, which is great. But I think watching old movies is really Moon fascinating. River, that's what she sings. Yeah, Moon you River. Know, watching yeah. some of the, like, I, I watched a handful of Christmas movies, you know, old Christmas movies uh-huh. every year, Holiday Inn and White Christmas. And yeah. it's a wonderful life and, and, and all of that. But uh, even like some of the old musicals. Oh, are, yeah. I mean, like Singing in the Rain, oh, West I just Side watched Story. It. And, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I, I think I'm going to go next year to see West Side Story. Uh, I don't know if you hear there's a new, heard mm-hmm. there's a new version coming out. And uh, a friend of my son's, um, he did a Broadway camp this last summer in Orlando. They brought in Broadway stars at Dr. Phillips, and um, one of the one of the teachers of the camp, 
you know, young, currently on Broadway, and he's playing one of the lead characters in West Side Story. So we're going to try to go see him and support him. Uh, go to New York maybe next year. I think it opens sometime in February. But yeah. yeah, we love musicals too. Well, it's funny that we're talking about older things because the name of the show today is The Lost Art of Gratitude. The Lost Art of Gratitude. Yeah. And um, there's several aspects to this idea, and I'm, I'm going to let kind of the uh, stream of consciousness thinking to take over because um, as we we're talking about older movies, you know, there there are certain ideals. And, and I was even just talking to a guy at breakfast. I go to this place for breakfast often, and I've made a few friends that are regulars like I am and because we always sit at the bar. And he was saying that um, it's interesting how, because he was saying he grew up poor. I said, yes, so did we. And he said, but when we didn't have money, we still took care of what we had. Mm. And he said, and I don't see that today. And I said, well, you're you're absolutely right. And um, and it's it's interesting. Um, so some older ideas we know racism, sexism that were alive during those times. There were also some very good things. One is you you took care of what you owned. You you know honor even if you didn't have much. It didn't mean you had trash everywhere in your right, yard. Right. You still did your best to to clean up, to honor, to respect, you know, the things you have. And a gratitude is actually one of those things that I believe has kind of been lost. So it may mean I'm getting older, that I'm noticing things like this. But there are certain things that um, when I was young that were really, um, uh, uh, what's the word, emphasized as being important. And one was gratitude. Uh, And it wasn't just for my family. As a matter of fact, you know, we all learned to say, you know, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Because I I grew up in Georgia. Mm -hmm. But there was a particular um, woman at my church. And uh, I even wrote a book. I dedicated it to her on this topic. It's called um, A Grateful Life, 30 Days of Conscious Gratitude. And that is available um, at Amazon. Um, A Grateful Life, 30 Days of Conscious Gratitude. And I did a, a short dedication to her in there, and I, I want to tell you what happened. So I was, I was about, well, it's about 11 or 12 years old, and we had just gotten back from this big trip. So I, was, I grew up in Georgia, and we, we drove all the way up to Wilmore, Kentucky, a tiny little town. The main thing in the town is a school called uh, Asbury Theological Seminary, where I, I thought about going. Every year they had this big uh, Christian rock concert called Ichthus. Oh, oh, heck yeah! Yep. Yeah, and Very so familiar with that. <laughs> yeah, and so this a friend of ours had gone to college there and really loved it, and I think she had met her husband there as well. Anyway, she took us up, and we got out. Um, I was getting out of the van, and you know it had been a tough trip. I mean, she had driven all the way there and all the way back. It had rained the entire time we were there. I mean, it was a really intense trip. Well, you know, as a kid, you don't really understand all that the adults are doing. So anyway, I went to get out of the van and she said, well, can't you even say thank you? You know, now obviously she was tired and, um, you know, an adult who'd given a lot. And here I am just a, you know, kid. And I was like, she said, I thought you would be more grateful. And I, and I, it's kind of like I my my heart sank, you know, I kind of got this feeling in the gut of my stomach, like, oh man, I really screwed up. Mm. And I said, I am so sorry. Thank you so much. I am grateful. Well, a few years ago, when I was thinking back to people that had really impacted my life, that one interaction was hugely impactful. And this uh, woman was a friend of our whole families. I mean, she sold my brother his first car, which was a Squareback uh, Volkswagen. I think she sold it to him for about twenty dollars, um, but she had been really um, important to my family. And then when I was in college, she and her husband gave me a scholarship. I want to say it was like a thousand dollars that I really needed for school. And she said, "If you become a teacher, you don't have to pay me back. But if you don't, you owe me the thousand back." <laughs> so um, anyway, I did go out and teach. So luckily, I I got clear on that debt. Um, And I recently talked to her a few years ago when I wrote the book, but um, she was trying to teach me a really important lesson, which is when somebody does for you, you know, uh, gratitude is the appropriate response. Yeah. And we grew up um, to when someone did something for us, we, uh, especially an adult, like there was a friend we often stayed with in, in Florida growing up. 
And um, when I would come back at, from from college, I would drive all the way from Georgia down to see her in Daytona, which was about an eight hour drive then. And I always left a special thank you note on the pillow, you know, when I left, because she gave us all our food and took us to the beach and all that. And so we were just really taught to really honor people who did things for us. Um, saying thank you in a text message or an email doesn't cut it, friends. <laughs> that ain't nothing. Even still, it's better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's better than nothing. And and actually, uh, there's somebody I owe a real important gratitude note to. So um, I've been composing it in my head, and I said, I'm going to get that done this weekend just because of the level of gratitude I, you know, I have. Yeah, it reminds me of a story when I was in seventh grade, I guess, and uh, I had started playing drum set. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I, we played like, I don't know, whatever a seventh grade band band does. Mm -hmm. uh, like, not, it wasn't a jazz band, but it was like the Miami Vice theme or something like that. It yeah, was something, I was going to say on Broadway. Something corny <laughs> like that. Or no, it was uh, like a, a, a rock and roll oh, cool. retrospective thing. And yeah. so, we, you know, Hound Dog and all that stuff. And so uh, I had a drum solo, yeah, right. And so it was like really the first time that I had ever like had that that kind of experience, and and like people went went crazy, you know, because there was a little seventh grader and with with some talent, you know, and, and oh yeah, and very not, much, you know, not completely butchering it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so after the concert, I had so many people coming up to me and thanking me and telling me I did such a great job and, and man that was amazing that was amazing and I didn't know how to process it because yeah. I'm just you know I'm 12 you exactly. know what, what does a 12, 12 year old know how to how to deal with that and so we were <laughs> leaving and, and and I said uh to one of my friend's moms and I said God, I wish people would just leave me alone and quit thanking me right or quit telling me how great I was uh, and she turned to me and said, you whiny little snot. <laughs> yeah. How dare you do that? Right. And so, and and I was really, I because I didn't know how to process it. And here's the thing is, I don't, I don't know, I don't even know if Shannon knows the story. I, I was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. That's why. I, the, the, the adulation, which sounds a lot, but it wasn't like... like it wasn't a paparazzi moment, but the adulation, well, just, I was uncomfortable with it. I was going to say, as a kid, it's hard to take that in. It, it yeah. really was. And so my only reaction was to want them to stop. Right. But but that has really helped me, mm -hmm. even as a little 12-year-old, it helped me understand that, that when, in that case, it was somebody telling me I did a good job. Mm -hmm. My reaction is, thank you so much. Yeah. It's, it's, my reaction uh -huh. is gratitude, right. not... Thankfully, you know, I thankfully I didn't go, yes, I am awesome. You know, my right, reaction you know. was, oh, this is weird. And I pushed against it. Mm -hmm. But that was a really, really big moment. And 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 I carry it with me today. Mm -hmm. If anybody says this your track is great, or congratulations on getting air, or you 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 sounded great tonight, uh, I I that I go back to yep. you know, uh, yep. Chris Fowler's mom telling me, you whiny little snot, you know, that might have been a little aggressive for a 12 year old, you know, and it got it, your attention. It though. absolutely got my attention. And mm -hmm. it, it really, it really helped instill in me a sense of gratitude for that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. I, I was that way too, with, with uh, both music and with talks that, you know, I didn't know how to receive it, you know? And so, um, if we don't take it in, it really is dishonoring of the person's, mm -hmm. you know, gratitude. If we say, oh, oh, it, it wasn't that good, you know, uh, frankly, we're telling them they're wrong, right. you know, and we're not receiving it. So, yeah, receiving someone's gratitude is uh, a part of gratitude, yeah. right? It and, really and, is. Yeah, and you think, I'm just trying to be self-deprecating, but, you know, what, you're, what, you, what you might be doing and what I was mm -hmm. doing was I was hiding my, my embarrassment and my un uncomfortableness. Yeah. Well, I, I recently had a situation, um, you know, I've been going through a time of transition. There were a lot of people that just kind of came out of the woodwork to help and support me do certain things and not because I, I didn't ask at all and people just showed up. And so I decided to have an event at my new home and um, that was a blast. And and I didn't even say to everybody, this is a thank you, but it that was the energy. Mm -hmm. And I, because I thanked everybody individually you know, who had supported me. Um, and then it was great to have um, my friend John Stringer there, you know, and his family. And it was just a night filled with love and joy. And um, I, for me, 
that was a very important way to say thank you. Oh, I absolutely felt that. And I felt honored to be invited to that, you know, mm-hmm, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean, I'm your producer and everything, but this was clearly like, yeah, you surrounded yourself with, with people that, that really um, meant, a, meant a lot to you and that yeah. had supported you on that. And so I was honored and it was a packed house. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so thank that you. That was fun. That was fun. Well, and, and a lot of my teaching on gratitude, you know, I, I talked about the book, The a Conscious Life, 30 Days of Conscious Gratitude. That book is really, um, it's, it's a real easy read. It's a thin, thin book because it's just a short affirmation in prayer. It's like a way to start your day. It's kind of the written version of now what our daily affirmations are that we, that, you know, upload onto the channel uh, every day of the week. And um, also though, in my prosperity material, which is another book I wrote called Prosperity for You. It's also available um, through Amazon. And there's a whole a chapter in there on gratitude. And so what we want to remember is that gratitude is the great multiplier. Gratitude is the great multiplier. And so what this uh, principle means is that as we give thanks and acknowledge everything we have, then we open ourselves to receive more because we're acknowledging the good in it. We're acknowledging the power and the presence that brought it. And so... Um, what all of us do, I mean, what's totally human to do is to see what we don't have, mm. you know, yep. and our whole culture does this. Uh, and one of the reasons, honestly, is advertising. Advertising is constantly showing us what we don't have and telling us we need it, right? So we go throughout life, throughout this uh, American culture anyway, we're advertised to, and so we think, oh, well, I don't have this, I don't have that. You know, like, honestly, do we really need the brandest, newest iPhone ever? I mean, you know, I know they're cool, but do we absolutely need that? You know, the phone's working fine, and suddenly we realize, oh, my gosh, I have to have a new thing. Because I don't have the latest shiny. Because I don't have the latest shiny toy. When, in fact, what we have might be just fine. Um, so... Anyway, I'm saying all of that to say we we forget to notice what we have and we focus, again, which is very human, on what we don't have. Well, when we do that, wherever our focus goes, it's like our whole consciousness matches, our whole world begins to match the thoughts we hold in consciousness. So when we see what isn't there, Spirit says, you're right, you know? Spirit says, you're right. But when we acknowledge and honor what is there by honoring it, by giving thanks, like we're saying, by taking care of it, um, when we when we do all these uh, uh, behaviors and we give thanks, it's like we're saying to the universe, thank you for this, I'm ready for more. Thank you for this, I'm ready for more. So I'm, I'm doing this show, uh, The Lost Art of Gratitude, because I've really seen in my own life... Um, it's amazing in terms of physical things what has shown up for me um, in using the power of gratitude in my life. And what's amazing is that the gratitude has just kind of flowed out. I think after a lifetime of practicing it, writing about it, teaching about it, it just has become a part of who I am. And I love to thank people for their help and their support. And I'll often do it in email form. But um, as I but as I said, there's nothing like a handwritten card, taking somebody out to coffee or dinner and saying, hey, man, I just want to thanks for all your support. You know, people are blown away when I when I do things like that. It's like, oh, my gosh, you're so welcome. I enjoyed doing that or it was no problem. But but me taking the time uh, to do that has been um, really impactful both to me and to others. And when I do it, it, it even strengthens the bond. Like people feel really, really honored by that. One of the things that I try to do is um, whenever anybody in the house makes dinner, mm-hmm. I will always, always say, and I don't even really consciously know I was doing it, <laughs> but I will always say, right. thank you for, thank you for making dinner. Right. Thank you so much for, for making, and whether it's Shannon or whether it's Judy or, or whatever. Uh, or myself, <laughs> look in the mirror. Thanks, Dave. For that. Thanks, Dave. You're but, really uh, special. And, and so, <laughs> and do- gosh darn it, people like me. Uh, and uh, and so I didn't re- really kind of realize I was doing it until you know one day Judy thanked me for thanking her. She's like, "Thank you so much for always saying thanks. For, thanks for dinner." Right? Who doesn't want to be appreciated? Yeah. And it, it it was just it's just a conscious way that I can acknowledge that I don't take this for granted. Mm-hmm. You know that it is mm-hmm. a big deal, and especially. Everybody's got things to do. Everybody's, you know, pulled in a million directions and everything. So to just like 
sit down and cook dinner, you know, spend an hour putting a meal together, um, for at least in our in the crop house, right. uh, is is somewhat of of, of a rarity, mm-hmm. right? And so when that actually happens, I always want to acknowledge, hey, thank thank you, thank you so much for making dinner, and it's just a small thing, super small. Um, but um, it helps me. It makes me feel good. Well, and going back to the love languages, I know Dave, you and I like mm-hmm. a, a talking about and and um, you know experimenting right. in our relationships with the love languages. And you know, if you know somebody, uh, we should probably put a link to that book too. Um, the five love languages by is it's I think it's Gary Chapman. Um, and um, <coughs> excuse me. Um. If, if somebody in your life really likes to receive love a certain way, especially if you're trying to give them uh, gratitude, you want to make sure that if they are somebody who receives um, acts of service, you know, as their love language, that even the thanking them will be good. The acknowledgement of that act of service. Yeah, the acknowledgement of the act of service or even saying, like I was talking about the party that I did, that get-together I had you know, to say, you know what, I wanted, that meant so much to me. And I'm talking about bigger things, obviously. That meant so much to me. Let's go do something you want to do, mm-hmm. you know, as a thank you. I just want you to know how grateful I am. And boy, that does, uh, that does wonders for, for friendships and relationships uh, of the romantic kind. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's cool stuff. We, we love, uh, everybody loves to be thanked. And um, also I would say, because uh, we're saying the lost art of gratitude um, writing it down, writing a real thank you note, um, really makes an impact. That, that's something that I'm horrible at. Uh-huh. I'm horrible at any handwritten communication. Mm-hmm. I'm just, yep. I know. Like, I don't even like writing checks, you know? I know. You're so plugged <laughs> in. I, I am. I know. And so, uh, so here's what's funny is like I will spend as much or more time like finding a gif or a, or a, a meme yeah, yeah. or something that communicates how I feel. I will spend more time looking for that than I would have if I just wrote something down and put a stamp on it. <laughs> right. Well, um, there, there. It's actually hard to find nice stationery, and so I have always had, um, as an adult, I'll always have like one small little box of like a really nice stationery. Yeah. And there's a great company, uh, it's actually called Papyrus, and they have beautiful paper. There's actually one locally here in, in Orlando, and uh, they have beautiful paper. And, you know, like everybody now, the only the only problem with when you shop there is if you give them an email list, you'll be ordering way more, oh, way, way more packages of cards <laughs> than you probably need. But um, there's something about a um, receiving something in the mail that... It still carries kind of a special energy anyway. Oh, absolutely. I remember the first musical I did here in Orlando was Sweeney Todd at the Mm -hmm. Garden Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, on opening night, I had a handwritten thank you note from the female lead who was playing uh, Mrs. Lovett, Candy Heller. Uh Oh, cool. uh, and a, a, a handwritten note saying thank you so much. We're gonna have an amazing time. Uh, You know, break all kinds of legs. And then she gave me this little, uh, this little fake. (laughs) <laughs> this sounds really gross, but it's like a, a fake dis, dismembered thumb, uh-huh. right? Just a little funny thing. Uh, but I, I keep it. It's it's on my my desk at Full Sail. <laughs> there you and go. I used to keep it in my stick bag until yeah. it scared the heck out of me when I was looking for a <laughs> stick and this like bloody thumb was just sitting at the bottom of the bag. I had there to you take go, it out. friends. Who knew a bloody thumb could be a great gratitude <laughs> gift? And with that, we will go to break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. We'll return to the program in just a few minutes, but first, we wanted to give a special word of thanks to our podcast partner, CCU Orlando, who has helped make this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey possible. CCU Orlando is a welcoming community dedicated to transforming lives, celebrating diversity, and supporting soul growth. CCU Orlando is located at 771 Holden Avenue in Orlando, Florida, with Sunday services at 9 and 11 a.m. You can stream services live online as well as learn more at ChristChurchUnity.net. We'd also like to thank Natural Awakenings Magazine of Central Florida, Greater Orlando. Each month, Natural Awakenings Magazines across the country take a practical look at the latest natural approaches to nutrition, fitness, creative expression, personal growth, and sustainable living. Natural Awakenings Magazine is a free publication and is available in selected stores, health and education centers, healing centers, public libraries, and wherever free publications are located. 
You could learn more, including advertising opportunities for your business, by calling 407-628-0705. And finally, we'd like to extend our special thanks to Unity of Nashville, a sister ministry of CCU Orlando. If you're searching for a like-minded church community and a personal connection that supports your heart and mind in the Central Tennessee area, then join Unity of Nashville at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning at 5125 Franklin Pike. For more information, head over to unityofnashville.org. And now we return you to this week's episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey with your host, Rev. Cynthia Alice Anderson. And welcome back to the show. This is show 63 again. We're we're at the halfway point on the lost art of gratitude. I hope you're getting inspired to uh, reach out and thank those people. You know, the other th- uh, that have impacted you, sorry, I should finish that sentence. I hope you feel inspired uh, to reach out and uh, acknowledge those people who have in- inspired you or supported you. And another way uh, I like to do it besides writing a note um, is I really like to call people and I do really like to go out with people. I mentioned like taking somebody for dinner or coffee, but sometimes a phone call too really means a lot because it is a step more than a text and it often leads to a, you know, a deeper connection on, on something else. So I really like to do that as well. What would you say to somebody like me who, (laughs) when I get a phone call, first of all, if it's unknown number, just don't even bother. I'm not, well, if I'm it's not, a friend, no, 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 no. My my point is, is that if I get a phone call, then like I'm immediately in business mode. Like if you ring me up, then I'm in business mode. But maybe even as I say that, maybe that's maybe that's part of it. To to pick up a call expecting business and then getting a thank you. Yeah, wow, that's almost yeah. subverting expectations. Sorry, I like just, I, I would just say to you, thought. I would say to you, hey Dave, you got a minute? And I'd be like, all right, okay, all right, business mode, what's up? Yep. I'm, I'm. Right, and I'd say, you know what, Dave, I just, I was looking over some of my notes, I've been listening to a show, and pause, you know what? Pause, Oh, okay, oh man, I'm in trouble, what did I mess up? I'm, I bet one of the titles is wrong, oh my gosh. And you know what I was thinking? What, what, what were you thinking? I was thinking, great work. Man, I am so grateful. <laughs> I just told somebody the other day how grateful I was to be in your studio, and how nice it was, and how nearly every time I come, you've added something to add to the professionalism of the show. Thanks, man. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. I'm lifting you up. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, (laughs) I mean, I wish people would quit thanking me. (laughs) I'm just kidding. You would receive that though. I absolutely, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 It it worked. See, I mean, I got y'all misty eyed right here. I know I'm all for (laughs) clamped. Exactly. (laughs) Gratitude is thing because gratitude somehow touches the heart. It's like, it makes the heart open. Right. And so, when our heart's open, we are ready to receive. If your heart's closed off, you can't receive. And so, you know, I over the years, I've done a lot of counseling about money, about prosperity, about, you know, people kind of getting themselves into the flow and also teaching them there is no flow, you're it, so make the flow happen, you know, by giving, by acknowledging, by giving thanks, you know, and, and things like that. And, you know, it's always, you know, people will always say, well, I'm just kind of stuck. I say, well, how are you, are you, first question is always, are you tithing? You know, no. Okay. Well, that's the first stop because when you tithe, you're thanking God for all you have received. I said, everything you have is from God anyway. So if you are giving, you know, you get to keep 90%, you know, giving back 10%. I mean, I've tithed over 10% for years. So uh, it's probably going on 15 years now. I've tithed between 11 and 15%. And sometimes I do 20 if it's unexpected gift. Sometimes I do 50%. You know, I just, you cannot outgive God. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, are you grateful for what you have? Because if somebody's stuck, it's always, they are always focused on what is not working and what they don't have. So I really want to encourage you, friend, to start, um, to, to um, just try implementing more gratitude in your life and see what happens. Because both the giver and the receiver, when you're in gratitude, benefit. You know, it's, there's no negative to thanking somebody. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like if they don't receive it, well, that's about them. If they do receive it, wonderful connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and I, I realized I was telling Dave at the break um, earlier today that 
that my uh, he and I always talk, um, you know, in the break between between the halves, and we're checking out the show and whatever. And there's this ring I've worn uh, for a long time, and it says, in fact, gratitude. And I believe I got it um, at the CCU bookstore, uh, Shifting Souls. And um, we've had a lot of different rings, just real simple, where, you know, some of them say love, some of them say gratitude or wisdom. And when I was right, I think I got this when I was writing my um, a gratitude book, actually. That's just prayers and affirmations I was mentioning. Well, <clears throat> recently... Um, it's so funny. I've never wanted to get a tattoo, really. I've thought about it for a long time, but every time I thought about it, I was kind of scared. I didn't know where to go. And I was like, eh, you know. It's forever. And, you know, all yeah, of the tattoo things. All of the all tattoo the things, things, yeah. all the things that, that you say. So, um, but recently I was really, really guided to get a tattoo. And I kept, um, even a couple of years ago, I had gotten a gratitude tattoo and put it on my left arm. And I, and I even, um, I don't know, I was doing a weird thing during service and I held out my arm and people thought I had gotten a tattoo. Was it a henna or something? Or? It was, uh, it was like a, no, it was a, like a peel and stick, you know, gotcha. something like that a kid, temporary ink like a temporary thing. ink. Um, but it was when I was doing, you know, something on gratitude. And so we said, oh, I thought you got ink. I said, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to get a tattoo. Um. I used to make jokes that when I died and they were looking at my body, they would go, what's different about this? Oh, right. No tattoos. <laughs> no <ink. laughs> but, but that's changed. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so, so, so speaking of so art speaking of, of gratitude. The art of gratitude. <laughs> yes. So, so I was re really being guided to go get this tattoo. And I was like, my goodness, this is out of nowhere. And I'd asked a friend who had a tattoo I really liked where he got it. And I looked online. I just didn't connect. But anyway, long story short, I found a place. Um, I walked in, and the artist I had was thinking I was going to get my my tattoo with, of course, was gone that day. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Um, so I got a little disappointed, but I said, I know I'm supposed to do it today. It was like this overwhelming sense, and I and I didn't want to call anybody even and tell them. I said, if I start talking to people, I will not do it. Yeah. So I walked in, and she goes, you are going to get a tattoo today. I can feel it. I said, she said, you have so much energy walking in here. And I said, well, that's just kind of how I live. Mm -hmm. But yes, I have to get one. I said, but I was thinking of this other artist who's out. And she said, well, this artist over here, you know, is, um, is available. He's with somebody right now, but it'll be two or three hours. And I said, well, you know, I can come back, whatever. She said, well, why don't you come meet him? I think you should meet him. And so I went over to the guy's uh, desk where he was working. And the one word um, he had, it was a design that he had made, was gratitude. And that was the very word I was planning to get. Hmm. So I said, this is my guy that, that, you know, and I said, oh my gosh. And he said, oh, that's the word you want? And I said, yes. And he said, that, that word has a lot of weight. And I said, yes, it does. Hmm. And, and I said, and that's a gorgeous design, but I, I'm going to go with something simpler. He said, oh yes. He said, well, where are you going to get it? And I told him, you know, my left arm, he said, oh, you're absolutely right. I said, to me, that looks like something for somebody's back. He said, that's exactly what that's for. Hmm. I said, it's gorgeous, but that's not, you know, what I'm wanting. Well, anyway, so I found the, uh, it came back, they called when he was available, uh, had the right design, and uh, I I just, it was like a God moment for me um, to do it. And so I do have now ink on my left arm, yeah. you know, and it's kind of a handwritten script. It was very simple, and it does say gratitude, so I'm never going to forget it. I'm yeah. never going to forget to hold that in my consciousness. Yep. I always want to remember to say thank you, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, I'm I'm thrilled to have this. Yeah. It, it's so weird. It's such a, um, it was such a soul moment for me to go do it. It sounds I, funny, yeah, but I, it, no, it was no, such a soul step. Absolutely. That's what you know. We talked about eight eighteen and what what all that's about. Your with, tattoo with, with my ink, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's really important that you do have a connection with the artist who's putting it in there because his his or her hand. Oh yeah. Is is going to put something indelible on your body? Oh, exactly. And exactly. I think it's important to to have that connection. And to 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 so to feel good about the person, you know, it's not like right. you're going and getting, you know, <laughs> you know, just like some, something. I'm not buying groceries, right? Exactly, <laughs> and it's big. not like a picture of Kermit on my ankle, you know. No, this which was... you don't necessarily need to have a soul connection with the guy who's doing Kermit, but you know, you know what I mean, right? Right. Um, so when it's something so personal, and and I I do, and as does Shannon, um, we believe that uh, 
that tattoos should be very personal. Oh, yes, for uh, sure. For us. Yeah. Some people, tattoos are art, and that's awesome, and that's fine. I, I bless uh-huh. and affirm that. That's fine. Right. But um, for us, it has been tattoos in pivotal, life-changing moments. Yes, yes. And so uh, the 818 was at that time as I was like pressing into really want, wanting my career Your and studio. livelihood mm-hmm. studio pushing into a new territory. Mm-hmm. And Shannon, um, you know, got her, her back piece at that time. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, coming out of Memphis is when she got the jewels on her arm, yeah. you know. And so uh, I think um, knowing that that there's transition in your life and everything, I think it's absolutely, I mean, sometimes you just, you just want mm-hmm. something. And I think your spirit, not your, but when when mm-hmm. those transitional moments are happening, I think your spirit's really um, w- ready to say. I'll say I feel like I'm in a cul-de-sac here. Um, your spirit, no, I, your spirit's just basically saying, "I I want something." I know for Shannon. Let me speak for Shannon. Shannon wanted something yeah. that was a reminder and mm-hmm. was a totem, not for lack of a better word, mm-hmm. that was just a marker of. Yes, this is this is this is who I am and, and where I'm going. This is where I'm going. Exactly, exactly. Well, I have so much to be uh, grateful for. I o- always have. And so um what what is so interesting to me ultimately about this choice, about this word and what I've already said, I've already said physical prosperity. When I went to pay, I got a $50 <laughs> discount. <laughs> and so that was like what? It's even working right here, you know? Um, And so a great connection, like I said, a very unexpected connection um, as well with somebody I'd never met before. No, I've seen it. It's it's like, it's it's very delicate line art. Uh And uh, I'm going to ask, did it hurt? Yep. Did it hurt? You know, I get acupuncture, so that was nothing. I mean, I'm like, it's needles. Uh, I don't, um, you know, I've had... um, I've had different acupuncturists. As a matter of fact, one I had years ago, I used to call it acu-torture um, <laughs> because it always hurt. Uh, she was really intense. I was like, I, you don't have to put them in quite that far, you know. Oh, my gosh. Um, so uh, I think, you know, I just got an acupuncture the yeah. day before. So yeah. for me, it was no. Yeah. I mean, it a little, but I mean, uh, with all I've been through in my life um, – you know, that was my choice. So mm-hmm. it was a real empowerment of owning my self, my life, my body, my consciousness, my mm-hmm. direction. Um, that's That was important. Yeah. Well, it looks great. Yeah, thank it looks you. great. And thank the you. left arm, that's interesting. I wonder if there's something about left left arm and that kind of thing. I don't know. I know, because yours is like, my, I didn't realize like, yours is like the exact, the same, exact spot. same spot. Yeah. Yeah. And it is my first one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at 50. So that, yeah, no, that's, that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. So, so the idea, you know, with gratitude is really to wake us up uh, to the goodness around us. And so I want to encourage you to do that. And I, I want to tell you just a, a short story too of, of uh, when I was going through a tough time and how gratitude really shifted that for me. Um, in, uh, several years ago, uh, it was in my late twenties and I got really ill and I, they, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. You know, the doctors were, uh, trying, but misdiagnosing and it was, you know, I went to five doctors and all five doctors had a different diagnosis, two of which involved surgery. It's like, okay. You know, I, I finally said to, to one of the doctors, um, I said, now I, I respect you. I respect what you do, but, um, can I just ask, I'm going to ask you a, a straight up question. I want you to be honest. And and she said, sure. What, what is it? I said, you really don't know what's going on with me, do you? Mm-hmm. And she said, I don't. And I said, well, I appreciate your honesty. I'm going to um, leave the office now and I'm not going to pay for this visit. And she said, and you shouldn't. I said, because I ha- have to go to a different complete complete different direction. I'm, I feel like I'm, I, I am dying. Like I am down to 85 pounds mm. and I had been like a hundred and let's say I'd been over 150, almost 160 pounds. And I had gone down to 85 pounds in just, you know, a couple months time. And so, you know, nothing fit. I looked really different. I, I mean, it was just really concerning uh, my level of health, my level of unhealth. I mean, even my office was like, you need to go to the doctor. I mean, people thought cancer, is it like mm-hmm. an immune deficiency? Anyway, <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, it's hard to tell this quickly, but, but, uh, bottom line, I, I opened my, I, so I said, okay, God, I'm surrendered. What do I do? And so I opened the phone book 
to naturopathic doctors. This is when I lived in Seattle, and I just dropped my finger down, and the first one it I called. Turns out she works, she taught at the Bastyr University, which is the school that teaches uh, um, a naturopathic medicine. So she was amazing. And <clears throat> over the course of that first appointment, she asked me a few questions. They did several tests inside the office and said, what are you eating for lunch today? And I told her, and she said, I want you to take that bag and throw it away. Nothing you're eating is going to work with your system the way it is right now. Mm. And so I had this overwhelming sense um, right at that moment, oh, my God, how am I going to survive? Uh, now, it was no big deal. It was, like a, it was literally like a peanut butter and banana sandwich. But I was allergic to wheat. I couldn't have bananas, and I couldn't have peanut butter. <laughs> Like so that literally, was like a triple punch. that was like a triple, like literally, and it was only because my body had gotten so reactive. Right. I mean, after a while, I could go back to eating many of those things. But, um, but what happened in my consciousness is my world. I felt like got really small. Like I can have rice, you know, I can have some vegetables, <clears throat> you know, no dairy, no milk, no nothing. You know, I was working at a pizza place. You know what I mean? And eating pizza every other day. I mean, yeah. it was just so everything in my world got so small. And so I was constantly feeling like there's not enough, there's not enough, there's not enough. And because I'd gotten so thin, I was really worried about, you know, like getting enough to eat. So it's it's like really triggered and made to a really deep level. Well, one day I was looking in my refrigerator and and I and I was like, having this feeling of not enough, not enough. Well, you know, recently I'd been to the store and I started buying new products. And so even though I had new products, my consciousness was still not enough, not enough, not enough. And so finally I looked in the refrigerator and I went, oh, I'm thinking there's not enough, but I can eat this, I can eat this, I can eat this. So I was like, I just need, and by the way, this is pre-Unity Church, mm -hmm. I just need to see what I can eat and really focus on that so that um, I don't feel this, this um, you know, I just felt like um, so, uh, like, stripped of what I knew. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just, it was a real vulnerable feeling. So uh, that was a real turning point because I, I started finding restaurants that were, especially in Seattle, it's such an um, advanced um, kind of culture in terms of understanding health and things like that. So I found restaurants that would work with me. I found I learned the right questions to ask. And it was really all because I shifted my consciousness from what do I not have to what do I have. And then I started just giving thanks for that. And I was like, okay, when I would eat, you know, thank you, God, for this. Thank you, God, that my system can handle this. And then uh, after a while, I went back to the doctor and um, it was really interesting because I got all retested, which all this cost hundreds of dollars. It was pages and pages of blood work, uh, you know, the, the, um, the results. And she said to me, I've never, ever seen this. You have successfully um, completely changed your system. She said, none of the things that were on your list are now on there. Mm. So I went from eating, you know, um, there were like 50 foods I couldn't eat. I mean, I've never seen a list that exhaustive. And then she said, you know, there were two things. You need to really watch out for these, but, but um, you are going to be okay. She said, I've never seen somebody stay so strict uh, on the diet. But I think it was because of that little shift in consciousness. And it was just like one little moment of awareness that changed everything. And it was acknowledging, being grateful for, and then really um, blessing what I could take in. Mm -hmm. So I really want to encourage you in that, friends, whatever area in your life you might be. And I know for a lot of people right now, it's financial. Mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of people in a financial you know, difficulty. I want you to really honor, give thanks for what you have, and literally hold your wallet in your hand. Hold your purse in your hand. Hold the money in your hand. Give thanks for it. And remember that on the money, it says, in God we trust. Mm -hmm. You know, So really, I want to encourage you to give thanks, especially in an area you have need. See if you can just shift your consciousness rather than what I don't have, you know, to what I do have. I really, really want to encourage you to that. So, um, so that in your life, it's not the lost art of gratitude, yep. you know, it's the uh, newfound and renewed art of gratitude. And I, I guarantee you, friends, uh, the things that you're blessing will multiply. Gratitude is the great multiplier. So, um, Dave, any, I just realized I was kind of wrapping no, up. No, no, I was just, uh, that's 
fascinating, fascinating story uh, about, you know, being able to, to just focus on, on what you can do and what you do have. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. uh, like, like, well, like I said, whether it's financial, it's, it's so easy to get wrapped up into what you're missing. Yes. And, and and yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So I was just so, so just dialed into what you were saying. No, I think, I think that's good. Um, And, and I continue to learn it in all these other areas. Um, of my life, any any place that there's a perce- perceived need, I just give thanks for what I have, mm-hmm. and um, I can't believe the things I have um, manifested this way. I mean, actually, this new guitar I bought um, recently, um, the guitar I have, I love. It was a gift from my brother-in-law, but it's a big guitar. I mean, it's a, you know, I'm a pretty small person. I'm like five three, you know. So um, my whole life, I've tried to find a guitar that fits me well, and it's kind of hard. And I just play on the side for my enjoyment. But if I always feel like I'm reaching around and it's kind of clunky, I don't want to play as much. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty simple. So um, I had just been, you know, for 20 years, I'd wanted a new, uh, you know, a, a better guitar. And I either they were too expensive or, you know, whatever. Well, I started um, really thinking about it before this trip to Georgia. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give thanks for the guitar I have. Because this was such a gift for my brother-in-law. He, you know, he put in pickups, so it's electric acoustic mm-hmm. now. It sounds great. Um, you know, it sounds great when it's, you know, amplified and everything. And I was like, I'm just going to give thanks for this. Well, wouldn't you know it, that very trip that I went to Georgia, I went in this little store that I love, my son and I love to go into in Noonan, Georgia, and they sell, uh, they say, they sell vinyl, it's a... a they have all kinds of guitars. They have, um, they even have like, um, oh, uh, slide guitars, banjos. Stuff. I walked in and I was like, okay, this is so close to what I want. And I talked to the owner and he goes, I have exactly what you want in the back. And um, he said, I just bought it. And I, I, it is for you. He said, he brought the guitar out. I took one look at it. I said, I said, I'll take it. I didn't even ask how much it was. Like I had been thinking about it for so long, but it it did not appear in my life. I mean, it's the weirdest thing. And it's a 1930s, um, you know, uh, like little, uh, a lot of times people call it like a little salon guitar. Right. Like a backpack guitar kind of thing? Not or? that small. Okay. No, it's, it's bigger than a backpack. But um, anyway, great guitar, great deal, new strings. And I was like, you know, all I did was shift my consciousness mm-hmm. a little. And it was like, uh, it was, a, I mean, a quarter of the price for everything else I had looked at that was even yeah. similar. And I even texted a picture to our guitarist at CCU, Steve Luciano. He was like, "Buy it, buy it, buy it." <laughs> so, uh, well, for me, it's, yeah. it, it starts with the little things, and I don't mean like, yeah. like thank you chair, thank you coffee mug, no, not, right, not right, like right, that, right, but right. just um, you know, small little moments of gratitude yeah. for me kind of snowball into larger, you know, and it just it just percolates all day long. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it does. Well, friends, it brings joy, frankly. I mean, it's that simple. When you are in gratitude, because it opens your heart, it brings a lot of love and joy your way. So, Yeah, get, getting your, your, your coffee <laughs> through the Duncan window and make eye contact with the person and say, thank you so much. Yeah, You're it, doing a great job. Thank you so much. Oh, right. It, it's, Those little moments. Yeah, just imagine your life full of gratitude and how happy and contented you would feel. So again, thank you for joining us today, friends. We always bless you on the journey. And again, share it with those, share this show with those people in your life that are doing the spiritual work, that want to grow with souls, that are working to awaken, and know that we're happy, blessed, and honored to be a part of that. So blessings on the journey of your friend and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey presented by CCU Orlando, Natural Awakenings Magazine, and Unity of Nashville. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is also made possible through the continued support of our angel patrons, Dove Borland, Peter Gibson, Paul Caswell, JJ Hamilton, Arlene Meyer, Kathy and Terry, Marsha Mott, and Nora Miles. If you would like to support the channel as a patron on an ongoing basis or through a one-time gift, head over to experienceofthesoul.com slash support. And if you enjoy this podcast, help spread the word by sharing it with your friends and leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, or the platform of your choice. 
The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2019, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.